Greetings, Petroheads. Welcome back to Automation, the car company, Tech So, um, in 1987, like, it was not... 1987 was not only the, uh, the year of introduction for, you know, this hot hatch. Um, 1987 is also when the Ferrari F40 came out. And I think in 1988, since ESE is European Sports Engineering, and, uh, you know, basically we, we've built a rally car so far. And we've built a road-going rally car of, of that using the same engine block. And then also we've built a hot hatchback that uses the same layout, the same uh, all-wheel drive system, the same materials, and also the same engine block as that other car. So it's time for us to probably do something different, right? And because we are... A sports car manufacturer mainly um, I think it is time to build something like a, a sports saloon if you will as a sports saloon maybe also with a coupe version if you will. wait what's the difference between this and oh I see um, what do we start with the coupe or the saloon let's start with the coupe Because we do have something with practicality already, and that is the hatchback. The, the five door in particular. Like, if you really want practicality uh, more than anything else from any of our sports cars, then you could easily buy the, uh, the five door hatchback. Because this is supposed to be a sleek looking design on the. Make sure that we make it one such. On such thing. Um, yes, okay. Good. Um, now, none of our cars are uh, cheap to begin with. So, I don't see a reason why we should go for, you know, something a little bit less expensive here. Uh, also, we are gonna go with fiberglass uh, panels again. That's, that could be so, sort of our trademark uh, for the time being. Um, really, can you only flare this little part of the wheel arches? That's kind of weird. That looks very weird. And also, 215s as the maximum tire width from the, in the rear. We might we might want to go for something else then. Um, this perhaps? No, I don't really like the way this, this looks. Or you could make it look something like this. That's pretty aggressive and, you know, s sort of sleek. It's also smaller with a wheelbase of just 254 compared to 278. Or we could go with this one. Yeah, fuck, fuck, fuck the, um, fuck the saloon version. All we need is a, is a really nice non-engine coupe at this point. These materials the same. 245, 265, 3. That should be, you know, more than enough for the for the late 80s. Um, okay. Next up, the design. Actually, let's start with of these.
about it. And we can add some more uh, some more headlight fixtures in between. As kind of a supporting feature for the pop-up headlights, if you will. Um, also, do we put the patch here or on the bonnet? Actually, this is not even the bonnet, is it? Yeah, I mean, I think it looks better here. So then. Oh, we can do that as well. Um, grills. I think what I want to do here is get ourselves one of these. Uh, make this a little bit taller, I guess. Then the normal plate will go right there. Oh, this looks terrible. This grill is too big, I think. Also make these a little bit longer. And then we can just go for one of these. And maybe a couple of these to round it off. Um, I'm also going to add one of these bonnet, bonnet humps uh, to make it look a little bit more sporty I guess then also some side indicators maybe we should move the, the main grill a little bit further up like right there instead Well, if you just turn it around, no, that just looks even worse. I think I'm gonna leave it this way. Not not every not every design can be a winner. Um. You need to show people that this is a serious player when it comes to sports cars. So uh, what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna give this thing one of these kind of wings. I mean, it's, it's more like a lip. But it counts as a wings, as a wing type fixture.
like the way that uh, makes it look. And I don't want to put the regular lid on there because I want to have a lid back here. Maybe we just don't add a wing. Big exhausts, and then okay, right here. As far as taillights go, I think you might try something different this time. Something like this. And then... One of these to round it off. Yeah, okay. So we are going to make this thing real world drive. Because so far we've only had all world drive cars and it's time to, you know, do something else. And it's not like real world drive is, you know, completely out of the, the ordinary. Like it was, it used to be a lot more common than it is, I guess, today, in today's age. Um, because, like, front row drive, well, it's safe to drive and everything. What color, also, what color do we want for this thing? Red? Red, like an alpha? Rather a deep blue, like that. Yeah, let's keep it blue for now. Engine. Because we're currently selling two other cars, we are we are kind of making some money, and uh, we can we can afford to develop a new engine. Um, I've been thinking about what kind of engine I want in there, and it's gonna be a V8. From aluminium, because we're not messing around. Um, and it's gonna be a push rod design for now. I want this thing to be around five liters. Maybe two point five is fine for now, I guess. Okay, I guess. If it's gonna be precisely five liters, then that's also fine. Um Probably a forged steel crack. I don't think there's any reason to go with billet steel because the RPMs on this thing are the RPMs on this engine are not going to be crazy high anyway because it's only the 80s and we're using a pushrod engine. Um, still wanna still wanna make some revs though. Like we still wanna rev this thing to at least like. At the very least, 6,000 RPM, more like 6,200 or so. Um, I don't know how high the compression ratio can be at this point. It's going to be naturally aspirated. It's going to have multi-point EFI. And the front of the setup, I guess.
Now we have premium fuel available. Uh, but it's not that common yet, even in Europe. Let's use regular unleaded fuel because I want to, I want to, I want this thing to be, uh, you know, kind of accessible in the in the sense that you can uh, you can fill it up on any old gas station. Well, the max power is not going to be that high anyway, so I'm just going to go with one straight fuel and actually one reverse fuel muffler because this is. Oh fuck it! Two straight fuel mufflers. This is, this is not going to be a GT car. It's more a sports car. We're making our peak power at 5100 RPM and also we need to shove in the cam profile. We know that because of our torque curve, it drops off very early. Ah, okay. Also we're knocking. Not not necessarily on heaven's door, unfortunately. Uh, 266 horsepower. And 400, just, just slightly over 400 million meters of torque from a 5 liter push all the is not really what what you'd like to see. But because we we made some nice revenue with the like the hatchback in particular, like people in Europe went all over that thing. People went crazy over that uh, hatchback. So uh, we can afford to to give this thing some quality in some certain areas. I don't think I, I don't know if the camp like the, the head is one such area where we wanna do that. It does increase our reliability by quite a bit and we can now also rev it higher. This is less valve float. 5800 RPM seems like a pretty good number. Two hundred and seventy-nine horsepower. Let's increase this by one more point. Let's turn two seventy-nine to eighty-one. Two seventy-five. That's a nice number, I think. Um. Two hundred and seventy-five horsepower. Should we go a little bit bigger on the capacity? I think we should. 5.2 perhaps. No, it, it would be sort of... It would be unreasonable at that point in time. Like, in 1988, engines just generally weren't really that big. So... I guess... That's gonna be it for now, as far as the engine goes. That's gonna be the 19... I'm gonna think of a name. Uh, but this is gonna also have a 5-speed manual. Uh, top speed is obviously gonna be higher than 146. Top speed is probably gonna be around 250 somewhere. Gift is a geared LSD. And some sports tires as well. 255 rears is probably gonna be enough. The power this thing makes. go with 16 inch rims alloy rims because we're not messing around alloy is lighter than steel and we're gonna go with three piston discs front one piston on the rear 300 millimeter brakes is gonna be nice gonna fit a fully clad on the tray You 
No, let's leave this at 50 for now. We'll see about the wing angles later. It's always going to depend on how much we need. Um, do we want higher top speed or do we want better cornering? We'll, we'll see about it once we get the, the first results. Now, this is, again, if you want practicality, buy the hatchback. So two seats. Um, sport interior, I think, standard cassette. And we are not going to give this thing any driver assist. There's some standard springs. Adaptive dampers, passive sway bars. And then we will go ahead and... Tune this a little bit. Let's see. Oh, this is actually fine. Uh, can we... Yes. That's awesome. Very nice sportiness. We got so much wheel spin though. It is a mo it's sort of a muscle car, isn't it? 247. Uh, so it can go faster, it seems. 5.7 seconds from 0 to 100 is not where we want to be at all. I mean, it's not slow for 1988. That's for sure. But at the same time, this is a 5 liter V8. Hey, you know what? It's fine. Let's see what this thing does on Tulsa. Wasn't there a car named the Conqueror? At some point in automotive history? Also, do you spell it with E or with O at the end? I don't know. Uh, but then again, this is the 5 liter and that is going to be... 1980 ESE. Five liter. OHV two seventy five horsepower. Not that we could change the engine head after we, uh, like when we copy this engine to create another trim. But you know, Conqu it's it's with no, I think conqueror, just like emperor. Uh, so, what else do we do with this engine? Hmm, I don't necessarily want to go with a, with a single overhead. I mean, I could also change the engine head to a dual overhead cam and fork of the cylinders, just like on the, just like on the N94 engine. And you know what, I'm actually going to do that. Now that I think a little bit more about it. Just because of the fact that... It's, yeah, just by selecting a different head and making the exhaust big enough, we gained 65 horsepower. And we can rev this thing a lot higher. Now it's actually the pistons that are restricting our RPM a little bit. It's, it's still fine though. But we did lose quite a lot of reliability. What if you do this? We got 350 horsepower right now. I think that might actually be a little bit much. Let's lean this thing out a little bit. Even though it's not strictly necessary to make this run leaner, because it, like, it's never going to be economical, is it? 
but uh, 325 is actually a nice number. 327. Twenty-four. Three twenty-five. I think this is how I wanna how I wanna keep this. So three hundred and twenty-five horsepower and four hundred and thirty-two newtons of torque, which is three hundred and eighteen point six pounds feet. And economy is significantly better than before. Drivability is worse because we are now gonna make even more wheel spin than before. I wonder if you do this. Then the acceleration time will still be 5.8 seconds. And that's bad. You know what? We wanna make this thing have slightly longer gearing. So that we have less wheel spin and better drivability. How about the quarter mile now? Thirteen point seven, rather than you know basically fourteen. I got the top speed now, oh, top speed is good. We need a little bit more cooling. Ah, and now, now we can uh, mess with the, 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 with the wing angles, or rather lip angles, I guess you, you should say. There we go, we got basically, these two arcs are basically identical. Meaning, yeah, they actually are. We're making exactly the same amount of lift at 200 km an hour on both ends. Thirteen seventy-two. And what about the good old air track? Which probably wasn't a thing yet. In 1988. Uh, 123.4. That's a solid time. And yeah, um... Drivability, yeah, I mean, it's low because it makes a lot of wheel spin, but it's a 5 liter V8, so that's kind of understandable. And it is light. You know what? Shouldn't we try to get prestige up a little bit by fitting, you know, some better entertainment in this thing? Should also make our weight distribution better. Maybe giving us better acceleration? No. Not just yet, wait, 28.5%, oh, it was 28.8% before. So that didn't change very much. Um, what if we fit anti-lock anti brakes? Oh my god. Okay, well, that... That helped a lot. Yeah, I think we should really uh, try and... Make this thing a little bit more uh, mainstream, a little bit more um, something that, uh, you know, we should equip this with things that are starting to become common and standard if we want to survive on the market. And power steering is still not really standard 
on sports cars in, in this day and age, especially on, you know, sort of exotics like this. Um, it does well in track premium, does well in light sport premium and in muscle. So that is kind of what we want. Let's see here. We would need more comfort and prestige if we want to do better in, in the GT class. Also, this thing is going to be a little bit more expensive than that. Uh, 33,000 and a little bit is, I think, kind of adequate. Yeah, okay. Good, so that was the ESE Conqueror. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Leave a like or a comment if you did. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.